Hello, welcome back to my channel. So this video is the stays for the costume close-up series that I'm doing. Now, I can't use these anymore. I did lose a decent amount of weight. We, I tried to, um, but these were made for previous size and they are far too big for me now. I also need to make some changes when I remake them um, because I've learned a lot. But I still wanted to put this video up here because, for one, I am insanely proud of them. And two, they took me a long time. And that is with even using machine stitching on a lot of it. But they were my first set of 18th century stays. I'm going to have to dissect them and pull out all the boning and then reuse it. But I even bound it with leather and put leather over the things, the seams, I guess, where the pieces go together. It is lined with linen that I put in by hand um, and so you know again one of my first forays into historical costuming and I just picked the costume close-up book and I'm working through the patterns in this and this is one of those patterns and I did alter it in a way that potentially I shouldn't have I'm gonna have to go back and look um, because you know I am trying to do the shape that is supposed to be with these um, but again, I'm extremely proud of these and I still love how they turned out. I wish I didn't have to uh, dissect them and uh, salvage all the stuff because it hurts to take apart a project that you put so many hours into. But anyway, I thought it would still be fascinating. I'm, you know, I did all the eyelets by hand. I sewed on all the leather by hand and I still love this fabric. And thankfully, I think I have enough of this fabric left to do another one because I still want to use it. Um, I don't know about the leather. We'll have to see. I don't even know if I'm going to rebind it in leather. But anyway, I hope you enjoy. I hope this is encouraging if you're newer at this and uh, like I was. And, um, you know, just to go for it and um, know that even if you don't know all the techniques and you don't have all the correct supplies, that you can still do it. All of these morning channels I did by machine and that is just fine. Um, there are parts of this that I did by hand, but not all of it. I do not have time to make a set of 18th century stays with this many channels by hand. I simply don't. You know, if you've watched too many of my videos, you should know by now that I do have five children and, um, you know, husband and wife, and sewing is just a part of that. And so um, I let the fear of doing it incorrectly or not historically accurate stop me for a really long time. And I'm actually kind of upset with myself that I did that because I could have made a lot of costumes for myself. Um, in the time frame of me thinking, oh, I can't do this because I don't have time. So, machine is not an enemy here. Um, anyway, I hope you enjoy and I look forward to showing you the process. Okay, so the first thing that I had to do for this was scale up the pattern. So, I made a copy of the page from the book and then finished up the grid on it and then transferred it to my grid paper and then did the lines and it took some figuring out to get it and then I had to tweak it and then obviously I had to make the mock-up which I'll show in a minute and see what adjustments needed to be made. I did put this in here it's just a really quick clip but I pulled out the patterns of fashion book and compared it because I was trying to nail down the exact correct shape and I wanted another pattern to compare it with and that's why I threw this in here <music> Now here the mock-up is just pinned together. I did go and sew it all 
together. I was just trying to get an idea and make sure that I had my waistline figured out. And when I turned it around in a minute, um, you'll see <laughs> I did some um, fabric fun to make sure that I wasn't wasteful because I was trying to use up some scraps for this. And I was trying to use some canvas fabric because it was a little sturdier to get the a better idea of the shape. So then I just went into cutting it. So the actual corset has the outer layer, an inner layer of cotton, and the um, another layer of linen, and then there's another linen lining, and that was the layers that was given in the book itself for what was in these stays. Um, also these pattern pieces I marked with all the boning channels best I could matching them up to what was drawn in the book. I think there was some change that ended up having to happen but um, I was just trying to give myself an idea there. And here I'm just showing you the different layers and these all three were flat lined together and then I marked them with a water soluble pen for the boning channels and sat in front of a sewing machine for quite a while to do a whole bunch of boning channels. Now for the boning for this, um, I just used a lot of zip ties. Um, boning isn't the cheapest and zip ties are a lot more affordable, especially given the fact that, um, you know, I have a big family and my husband is the one that brings in the income. So we are a family of seven on one income. So I'm, everything I do, it is with the lowest cost that I can do in mind. So I just cut them to the correct lengths and then sanded down the ends and after I rounded them off. And I'm gonna show in a minute, um, but it used quite a lot and they worked really well. Um, but it was a process of doing that and after doing this of cutting off the little tips and then it was a process and I had very sore fingers by the end of it, but it worked. all the edges down and then 
I'm pretty sure, yes, I did the eyelets next before I started sewing all the pieces together. And I just used the awl, punched it through, and then um, did all of the eyelets by hand, which I'm really pleased with how they look. I think they look amazing. And um, this part ended up not taking quite as long as I thought it would for all the eyelets. Um, and it was something I just did in the evening, sitting with my husband, probably watching HGTV. <music> The process of sewing all the pieces together was just putting the right sides together and very strongly whip stitching them together and this part was rather satisfying because it was I had been working with all of the pieces separate up until this point and then just seeing it come together and look like the picture and the shape it was really cool. Now, I thought my fingers were sore after all the boning. <laughs> I didn't really know what was coming. Um, this part made my fingers a lot more sore, and that was putting these leather strips down on top of all of the seams. I whip stitched it up one side and down the other, and then, you know, sewing the, um, the leather to the um, edging. I can't talk today. Um, I did that by machine to actually stitch it down, but then I had to hand whip it on the back side when I folded it over. And that was a challenge, and getting the needles through the leather <laughs> wasn't the most fun. And this honestly was the longest part of the whole process. And I did like how the leather ended up, but. Like I said, for the next pair, since I'm having to redo them, I probably am not going to use leather again because it just took such a long time to do that part. But I do like how it turned out. <music> This is just a paint stick uh, and I used for the center uh, busk. I believe it's still called a busk at this war. It is called a busk. I'm not sure. I'll have to go look it up. But I wasn't sure how to attach it to the front on the inside. So I just created a sleeve for it out of linen and then I whip stitched the sleeve down uh, by hand to get it on there. And I think it worked out really well. And then the lining went on, on top of all of that. And then here I just jumped to the footage of hand whip stitching the lining all the way around. Now I didn't use, I did cut off the tabs and sewed those on separately from the lining portion. I probably won't do that again, but I was not sure what I was doing and um, something had changed between when I cut out the corset, I think it was the boning made it smaller so the lining pieces were a lot bigger and it wasn't lining up very well and 
I was very ready to move on at this point in the project. So I ended up just cutting off the tabs, sewing it down, and then I went and stitched the tabs on later. And by this point in time in the project, my fingers were so sore. As you see, I have my little beading pliers that I was using to pull the needle out every single stitch when I was whipping, sti whip stitching the lining down to the leather on the tabs. <laughs> I just, my fingers wouldn't pull the needle up. I had to use the pliers. And this part I threw in just because it was funny to me. Um, and I'm using the white to show it. It's just how bent my needle is from this part in the project. And I used a brand new needle just for the tabs and then that's how bent it was at the end. I'm gonna do this the best I can so this is it but if you cannot tell how big this is this is so big on me that I had to put it under on my um, uh, modern clothes so that it wouldn't fall <laughs> um, so the alterations to the pattern that I did make was when I originally made it I put more here in this area um, this is really close to what the original pattern was here if you cannot tell this is humongous so anyway i'm trying not to have it fall down and it does not fit anymore however i wanted to it's cinched as tightly as i could get it um but i wanted to show it on like it's got the right i'm gonna duck down now um it's got the right vibe <laughs> but um definitely want to do it again and for updated size and so that I can actually you know put it on top of the shift and have it fit appropriately it does need to come down I think a little bit here because I remember it hurting me a little bit here but again for my first set of stays I'm ridiculously pleased with it I'm gonna dissect it after I turn off this camera and do it all over again but I definitely wanted to put this out there because I think it's very helpful to see when things don't go correctly or uh, when you have to completely redo something. Um, it definitely has helped me to see others that have been willing to show that and I wanted to show that. Now I will say that you know part of the reason I have to redo this is just because of it no longer fits but it isn't right anyway and so um i want to do it right this time so definitely still not going to hand sew all these boning channels not in your life i'm gonna do it by machine but i will do as much as i can by hand but it might be a while before that video comes out and we continue the series because I don't have anything else done for this series yet and I've started a few other things so this is going to be one that we revisit in the future and uh, as I hasn't, haven't even started the replacement for these it might be a while but 
I still have fun doing this video. I still have fun making these stays. I'm still ridiculously proud of these stays, even though I'm going to have to go, you know, cut them up. Um, and I wanted to show them off. So anyway, thanks for joining me. I hope you stick around and join me for the next project because as you can see, I'm having a lot of fun with this and uh, I enjoy showing it off. So I'll see you in the next one. Bye.